Yo, what is up guys? I'm bringing you a brand new video and this time I have for you today a guide to the Jade Starlight Forest. I wanted to make this guide because this spot has a few different mechanics and you're likely going to want to be grinding here because it's one of the best ways to get the Flame of Frost which is required for the Labresca helmet. And I wanted to do an overview of all the different mechanics as tips and tricks as well and kind of show some proposed grind locations so that you guys are prepared to grind here for all of your Labresca helmet needs. So starting off here, um, I'm going to show you guys a map of the proposed rotations that I recommend grinding. And you can see that most of these rotations are in clumps of three. That is because you're really not going to need to grind more than three different packs. And each pack actually will spawn with different compositions of mobs, which is pretty useful. So there's no spot that's better than others. And you're going to want to make sure that you're grouping up these mobs next to these particular braziers or totems or lamps because these totems offer certain little bonuses that allow you to kill the mobs much, much faster. For the most part, the mobs will be spawning directly next to one of them anyway, but if it does take you an extended time to kill the monsters, then you are going to want to make sure that you're pulling it to a nearby totem so that maybe you can use two of them. Now, there's a very interesting mechanic that is present at this particular grind spot after the mobs die themselves. So realistically, you are going to want to focus on killing as many of the smaller mobs as you can, because every time a larger mob will be damaged by that smaller mob as soon as the smaller mob dies. So you kill a small mob, and there will be a shockwave of green, and that particular shockwave is going to damage all the other monsters around them. So you don't need to worry about too quick of pull or too uh, nicely packed of pulls or anything like that. As long as you are killing the smaller mobs, it's going to damage the rest of them. And it's going to cause this chain effect, as you guys can see right here, which does some pretty big damage and ultimately will likely kill everything else in a chain reaction. And also the mechanic here. So there's a couple of special mechanics that you're going to want to look out for. Basically, there's going to be a message that pops up in blue text every once in a while. And it's going to tell you that some more powerful of the Okjinjini are going to be spawning. And they basically spawn in three different types. So you're going to be getting three spawns of three of the smaller groups of mobs. And after you kill those three, you then have three spawns of some medium-sized mobs. And then once you kill three of those, you're going to get three spawns of the big mobs. Now, it's worth mentioning that I have only ever gotten the Frost Embers from the larger of the events. And I have a limited time sample that I've been here, but it seems that the drop rate is much, much higher on the bigger mods, which does make sense. And from what I've heard from players in Korea, it's going to take roughly 30 to 35 hours of grinding here. It obviously depends a little bit on your grind speed, but if you're a high-end uh, player with a lot of gear, 35 hours is likely about how long it's going to take for you to get the Flame of Frost through the Ember system. And you can actually get an outright drop from here as well, which is pretty darn rare and probably not to be expected. Now, in terms of rewards for grinding at this particular location, the trash loot is worth a little bit over 20,000 silver, and it does drop some materials for an upgrade to the Spirit Perfume Elixir which gives it an additional five monster damage. And in general, the spot is not the most amount of money in the world. From, from what I have heard, it's about maybe 300 million silver an hour, but likely you're not here for the money anyway. You're likely here because you want that Labresca helmet. So the spot itself is very aesthetically pleasing, and it seems like it's going to be a pretty fun grind. The last little tip that I have, which usually is not going to be a problem, is make sure that when you are killing these packs of mobs that you don't leave behind any mobs from the spawn pack. Because if you leave behind even one small mob, it will it will prevent you from having the rest of them respawn and you're going to eventually have to deal with that mob anyway. So it's worth it to kill everything in every pack before moving on to the next one. But that is pretty much it, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. And if you guys did enjoy, please subscribe. And I will see you guys all in the next one.